Antarctica mystery. Bedrock in West Antarctica is rising at a surprisingly rapid rate. Antarctica still remains a mystery. People that are found there go by special permission. They're usually scientists and uh, maybe some politicians. Recently, even the patriarch of uh, Russia has gone to visit Antarctica because he established a little Christian Orthodox church there. But it's still a mystery. We don't know what's going on there. Uh, however, recently there was a report that scientists discovered 91 volcanoes below Antarctica, below the Antarctic ice sheet. So obviously this must be a very geologically active place. So the 91 volcanoes is an addition, in addition to the 47 already known about, an eruption would melt more ice in region affected by climate change. Scientists uncovered the largest volcanic region on Earth, two kilometers below the surface of the vast ice sheet that covers West Antarctica. It's a project by Edinburgh University researchers. It's revealed almost 100 volcanoes with the highest as tall as the Eager, which stands almost 4,000 meters, that's 12,000 feet in Switzerland. Geologists say this huge region is likely to dwarf out that of East Africa volcanic ridge, currently rated the densest concentration of volcanoes in the world. East Africa, I thought it was the Ring, uh, the ring of Fire, which has 453 of the world's active volcanoes. So volcanic eruptions may not reach the surface in Antarctica, but could definitely melt the ice from underneath it, drastically destabilizing it. But let's go to the bedrock in West Antarctica. West Antarctica, as we saw before, which has the high concentration of volcanoes. Antarctica as seen using Google Earth. If we have to cut the interior of the Earth, we see the mantle in red and dark red, and the core in yellow are visible. The ambience and sea ambiment is indicated by the red rectangle on the right. And the, the photo reveals one of the GPS sites in the study. The Earth is rising in one part of Antarctica at one of the fastest rates ever recorded. And that means something. Something is going on beneath the surface. It's rising at the fastest rates ever recorded as ice rapidly disappears there and weight is lifted off the bedrock, a new international study finds. The findings reported in the journal Science have surprisingly and positive implications for the survival of the West Antarctic Ice Sheets, WAIS or WISE for short, which scientists had previously thought could be doomed because of the effects of climate change. But it's not the climate change, it's what's going on underneath. The unexpectedly fast rate of the rising Earth may markedly increase the stability of the ice sheet against catastrophic collapse due to ice loss. That's what scientists explain. Moreover, the rapid rise of the Earth in this area also affects gravity measurements, gravity measurements, which implies that up to 10% more ice has disappeared in this part of Antarctica than previously assumed. Researchers led by scientists at The Ohio State University used a series of six GPS stations part of the Polnet Annet array attached to bedrock around the Amundsen Sea embayment to measure its rise in response to the thinning ice. The uplift rate, quote unquote, was measured 
at up to 41 millimeters, that's 1.6 inches every year. This is what Terry Wilson explained. He's one of the leaders of the study and also a professor emeritus of earth sciences at Ohio State University. In contrast, places like Iceland and Alaska, which have what are considered rapid uplifts, generally are measuring rises up to 20 to 30 millimeters a year. So that's about half or two thirds of what's happening in the uplift rate of Antarctica. The rate of uplift we found is unusual and very surprising. It's a game changer, Wilson said, and it's only going to get faster. The researchers estimate that in 100 years, uplift rates at the GPS sites will be 2.5 to 3.5 times more rapid than what's being currently observed today. Quote, these results provide an important contribution to our understanding of the dynamics of the Earth's bedrock, along with the thin, thinning of ice in Antarctica. The large amount of water stored in Antarctica has implications for the whole planet, he said. He's the lead study author. That's Valentina R. Barletta, who started this work at Ohio State and now is a postdoctoral researcher at the National Space Institute, DTU Space, at the Technical University of Denmark. The results, she said, provide an important contribution to understanding of the dynamics of the Earth's bedrock, along with the thinning ice in Antarctica. The large amount of water stored in Antarctica, of course, has implications for the whole planet. The new findings raise the need to improve ice models to get a more precise picture of what will happen in the future, she says. While modeling studies have shown that bedrock uplift could theoretically protect wise from collapse, it was believed that the process would take too long to have practical effects. Wilson said, we previously thought uplift would occur over thousands of years at a very slow rate, not enough to have a stabilizing effect on the ice sheet. Our results suggest the stability effect may only take a few decades. Wilson said the rapid rise of the bedrock in this part of Antarctica suggests the geology underneath Antarctica is different from what scientists have previously believed. Underneath the solid upper layer of Earth is a hotter and more fluid layer of rock called the mantle. Exactly how hot and fluid the mantle is varies across the planet. Well, we have an indication of what's happening with that lava flow in Kilauea that is so fast it looks like water running down, cascading, cascading, causing rapids, even spewing and uh, splintering and uh, throwing rocks off at a liquid rate, uh, going at about 17 miles per hour from what the USGS geologists say. That they say, some people say that looks like pure mantle coming out. So yes, how hot and fluid the mantle is varies across the planet. The rapid uplift around the Amundsen Sea abatement suggests that the mantle in this area is hotter and more fluid, or as scientists say, it has lower viscosity than expected, according to Barletta. Well, we see an example of that in Kilauea, fluid and has lower viscosity. Barletta ran a variety of computer models using scenarios of ice loss through time in an area to explain how such a rapid uplift could be occurring today. The results of Barletta's model show that the GPS findings today could best be explained by having a low viscosity mantle, Wilson said. That would mean the bedrock reacts more quickly when the weight of the ice is removed, which is exactly what the GPS results showed. These new measurements of glacial isostatic adjustment, GA, GIA, the scientist's term for uplift due to ice sheet unloading, are an important part of a wider story about the fate of the Antarctic ice sheets, said Doug Kowalewski, the Antarctic Earth Sciences Program Director in the National Science Foundation's Office of Polar Programs, OPP. Kowalewski said, the observed GIA response captured by the PolNet array 
is an order of magnitude greater than previously thought. The upcoming challenge is to couple the GIA observations with ice sheet models. These data will be of great value to the modeling community who examine the complex relationships between GIA, sub-ice, shelf, ocean, circulation, and ultimately ice sheet stability. The biggest practical effect of the uplift may be a rare bit of good news for what's happening in this part of Antarctica as a result of climate change, Wilson said. The West Antarctic ice sheet plays a key role, plays a key role in ice sea level rise. Okay, well, there you go. It's the West Antarctic ice sheet playing a key role in sea level rise. Estimates suggest this ice sheet alone accounts for one-fourth of global sea level rise that can be attributed to disappearing snow and ice. So one-fourth of the global sea level rise is due to the West Antarctic ice sheets melting. One-fourth, 25%. That's amazing. Some scientists suggest that WISE may have passed a tipping point in which the ice loss can no longer be stopped, which could be catastrophic, Wilson said. The glaciers there contain enough water to rise global sea levels up to four feet. Four feet. That's over a yard of uh, raised uh, uh, water. The problem is that much of this area of Antarctica is below sea level. Relatively warm ocean water has flowed in underneath the bottom of the ice sheet, causing thinning and moving the grounding line where the water, ice, and solid earth meet further inland. The process seemed unstoppable, Wilson said. Quote, but we found feedbacks that could slow or even stop the process. End quote. One important feedback involves pinning points. Elevated features of the earth rise from the surface below the grounding line that pin the ice sheet to solid earth. These pinning points are going up in response to the uplift of the earth and could prevent further retreat of the ice sheet. Another feedback is lowering sea levels. Massive ice sheets along the ocean have their own gravitational pull and raise the sea level near them, but as the ice thins and retreats, the gravitational pull lessens and the sea level near the coast goes down. The lowering of sea level, the rising of pinning points, and the decrease of the inland slope due to the uplift of the bedrock are all feedbacks that can stabilize the ice sheet, Wilson said. Other researchers had estimated how much the earth would have to rise to protect Wise given a range of future climate warming scenarios. Results of this study estimate that the bedrock at the Pine Island Glacier grounding line, which was part of WISE, will have risen about 8 meters, that's 24, 25 feet, in 100 years. That's about three times higher than values shown by others to, re to reduce the runaway retreat in this area. Wilson said, under many realistic climate models, this should be enough to stabilize the ice sheet. She said, while this study delivers some potential good news for the Edmonton Sea Embayment, that does not mean all is well in Antarctica. Quote, the physical geography of Antarctica is very complex. We found some potentially positive feedbacks in this area, but other areas could be different and have negative feedbacks instead. End quote. That's what she said. So regardless of feedbacks, models suggest that the Ys will collapse if future global warming is large. I'll leave links below for you for this. This is on physics.org. It was originally on Science Journal and provided by The Ohio State University.